Welcome to the 8th episode in my Pygame tutorial series. This is the last of the core episodes. In this episode I'll be going over my engine.py file. It acts as a framework for pretty much all of my games. If you go to my H.I.O. page and look at my games, almost everything uses this file. I'm constantly updating it, so that for this tutorial I'm using the latest version of it. Um, and I need to go over it so you can see what it's for. It mostly covers like collisions and stuff and entities in general. It handles like animations and uh, like rendering with rotation and alphas and stuff. Uh, it's also got some stuff for like particles that I won't be using in this video. For this video the main stuff we're going to be looking at is this entity object here. If you're not familiar with object-oriented programming and classes in Python and stuff, you should probably go look that stuff up. Uh, I'm not going to be covering that in this video. But basically I've got an entity class right here with a bunch of functions and properties and all sorts of stuff that's useful for programming games. So right here we've got some uh, set position function, which is for setting positions, the movement stuff which calls the movement function on the entity's object that the that object mother obj is for the physics object which is uh, another class this just returns the rect of the entity this is for like uh, horizontal flips so if it's like facing right or left this is a bunch of animation stuff this one's really important this is how you set the action uh, for the entity which is how it knows what animation it should be playing this force parameter right here is whether or not it should reset the animation if you told it to play a certain action again. There's a bunch of other stuff in here. You can look through it. Most of it's kind of self-explanatory. This is another function right here that's really important. Uh, this is the change frame function. This is how you go through the frames in an animation. Uh, and this is the display function. That's really important. So here's the physics object. This is uh, what most of my entities use for collisions. It's got some basic properties and a move function, which is called by the entity function when you call move on the entity function. So basically you pass it a bunch of uh, parameters, which are like the movement, which is just like uh, one, zero, and stuff like that. And then a list of platforms, which is in the form of a bunch of rects. And then ramps. I'm not sure, but those may not be working as of now. I use them in Super Potato Bra. And I may have broken them with some other stuff. I haven't messed around with them in a while, so they may be broken. Normally I just pass an empty list here. Actually, I'm going to switch this to that. So you don't have to enter it. This is a collision test function that's called by the move function. This is all very similar to what we did in here. Oh uh, yes, here's a move function, and then there's a collision test function. If you look here, you can see a lot of similarities between the, uh, this and this. So for the animations portion, there's some functions down here for loading the animations. And it this uh, framework stores the animations itself. You just need to set the directories properly and call the loading function. We're actually going to restructure the assets for this project in this video too. Uh, and this load animations function loads all of the animations with a certain direction directory and loads them up to be used as actions by certain entities. So first off we're going to need to create an image directory so we can move our images in there. We should do data first. And then inside data we're going to do images. Inside images we're going to do entities. This is for animations. Let's go back up here. We're going to need this. And I'm going to change this to player. And then there's the two types of animations in here. Now let's uh, drop in the other images into here. Maybe the dirt, the grass, and the plant. And let's just do audio right there. And I can move all of these files into here. And then I'll move the engine.py over here. First up, we're going to need to import that engine in our script. So import 
in data dot engine so the engine python file in the data directory as e so we can just call it as e so like e dot entity will generate an entity so one more thing we need to do before we can load up these animations is create an animations uh, basically data text file so i've already got one that i used for a game jam game recently and i'm going to copy it over here and it's got some pretty similar stuff we've got our idle animation so i'm going to go down here and look for how long those animations run for so i believe these are the durations the idle is 7 740 and run is 77 seven. we don't have a jump animation so i'm taking that out this loop thing is a tag that's used by the framework to tell what it should do when it's playing that action. If it's on loop, it'll repeat it once it reaches the end. You also need to be careful with this naming format. The first part of the name of these files is the name of the action under the name of the entity, and then underscore, and then the number of the image for the animation. If you're interested in this, you should probably look through here and look into how this stuff works. It's not really commented, so it might be a bit confusing, but it's also a bit self-explanatory. So let's load up our animations. So we can get rid of these animations right here, and we can get rid of these functions and uh, that too. And we just call e.load animations data slash images, and this is a folder to the animation stuff so this folder right here you can name it whatever you want i think so these paths need to be updated so it's going to be data images and then i'll just copy that move it over here and then these ones are going to be data slash audio slash and there we go so i can remove these Okay, so I'll create a player object now. So player equals e, that's the engine, dot entity, that's the entity object, and then the x, y, x size, y size, that's gonna be like the same as the rect from above. Now I just need to set the entity type, which the type is player, because that's what I named the folder with the animations, it's player. That's how it knows what actions are associated with that entity. So I can remove this now, because it'll generate its own rect. I don't need any of these that's its own thing now. I do need to keep this tau x thing because that's what gets passed to the move function. Do I also need to keep the player movement thing too. Okay, so here's the change action stuff and I need to swap this out with the action stuff for my player entity. So player dot set action. So the player dot set action and this will be of course run I believe. Or is this idle? Oh, it's idle. And we don't want to force it because otherwise it'll be just be stuck on the first frame. And then over here, this is the run one, and also run over here. And the player also has the flip attribute, which you can modify with set flip. So player dot set flip false and true over here. Now, if you go over to here, you'll see that there's different movement returns in the engine here. So collisions equals or collision types, because that's what that thing uses. So move, we don't need to specify player rect anymore. We do player.move, but we do need to pass it the player movement, the tile rects, and then I set the ramps over here to be automatically empty. And then if collision type bottom is true, this is all the animation stuff. So I can get rid of this and just do player.changeFrame1. That'll go to the next frame of the animation. Now we need to implement the display function. So that's going to be player.display, display, and then scroll, because that's our scrolling variable. Everything else should be taken care of automatically. That should mostly be it.
Okay, so I made a mistake up here. This needs another slash. It needs to end with a slash. If you're confused about all the stuff I was doing with animations before, you should probably go watch my episode on animations. I went through a lot of the concepts. Oh, I made a mistake here because this prefix here wasn't added to the second grass sound. Okay, now the scroll here was dependent on the old player system. So I can just do player.x and player.y. Let's see if there's anything else. Oops. Okay, so I made a mistake in the modification to this engine thing. You guys won't need to worry about this if you're downloading the source code. So here's the issue. Yeah, the ramps wasn't set to that by default. I did it in the move function. Okay, so we've got our movement animations and our idle animation is there. Everything is there now. So all I did in this episode was I just really simplified everything by using this framework module that I uh, use for all my games. So now this code is quite a bit shorter, so only 163 lines. And that's pretty much it for this episode. I really just wanted to show the implementation of this module right here. I use it in all my games, so if you're looking at my source code, you might be wondering what I'm using it for. Even if you don't want to use something like this, you should, I would recommend writing something like it for yourself. It makes everything a lot easier when you have a framework like that for your entities. It also makes it easier to add more enemies and objects and all sorts of things to the game that uh, fall under the category of entities. So since this was the last episode of the core series that I'm working on, I'll be moving out onto less fundamental topics uh, and also possibly some other more broad videos in the area of game development. If you have any questions, you can head over to my Discord server. I've got a channel dedicated to questions. And if you're interested in my projects, you can check out my Twitter or you can go to my itch page and take a look at all my projects. All my projects have their source available, although my, the two ones I've sold, you will have to buy it to get access to the source. But I've still got tons of projects that use very similar concepts with open source that are free.